Your Excellencies, if the distance is long, we can cut it short by running. Your Excellency, Dr. Abe Ahmed, Prime Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Excellencies, my dear brother, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, and my dear sister, former Deputy President Dr. Nsule Nkunka. Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Temeke Mekone. Your Excellency, Ambassador Musafaki Mahamat, Chairperson of the AU Commission, the Chairperson of the Peace and Security Council, Your Excellency Ambassador Bankole Adeoye, Commissioner for Political Affairs, Peace and Security, Excellencies, members of the Diplomatic and Councilor Corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the members of the AU High Level Panel, former President of Kenya, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, and former Deputy President of South Africa, Dr. Ponsule, I wish to thank the Prime Minister and the federal government for organizing this important event that brings us together to take stock of lessons learned from the Africa Union led and Ethiopian owned peace process as well as to also congratulate ourselves for the commendable work that has brought lasting peace to this beautiful country of Ethiopia. From my, from my first, from my very first engagement on this task in 2021, and even in the darkest moments, I remain hopeful that together we will reach the day when the guns will be silenced and peace will return. Much of the success in the peace process is owed to the leadership of His Excellency Dr. Abe for his steadfastness and the bold steps he took in the interest of peace. We really commend your effort, Mr. Prime Minister. Of course, we cannot fail to mention the bravery, too, of the leadership of the TPLF. Peace is always a collaborative process to be achieved and to be sustained. There's a famous saying Success has many parents, while failure is an orphan. <clears throat> and the success of the Ethiopian peace process owes a debt of gratitude to many others, whom I would like to acknowledge. First, I would like to thank the chairperson of the AU Commission, Musafaki Mohammed, for entrusting me 
with this enormous and extremely important task as High Representative for the Horn and for bringing on board my brother, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, and my sister, former Deputy uh, President Dr. Ponsule, as members of the High Level Panel. I applaud the commitment of the AU Commission Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security under the leadership of Commissioner Bankoli Adeoye and his team of committed officers who worked tirelessly to support us. I express my gratitude to the observers and broader international community for their facilitation and support of the process, political, technical, logistical, and financial. I would like to make a special note of thanks to the government and people of South Africa for hosting the peace talks, as well as to the government and people of Kenya for hosting the Nairobi One and Nairobi two follow-up processes. The diplomatic and political support of the Peace and Security Council cannot be negle uh, neglected or ignored. Excellencies, since the deployment of the monitoring, verification, and compliance mechanism to monitor the implementation of the cessation of hostility agreement. We have continued to register positive gains in the field, thanks to the goodwill of the parties and the, broad popul and the broader population. It is imperative that we continue to provide the necessary support for the monitoring, verification, and compliance mechanism in order to harness the gains and maintain momentum. Following the handover of the heavy weapons, the next phase of demobilis demobilization, namely the question of small arms and light weapons, the clearance of included ordinances, the full relocation of combatants to designated sites, the resorption of schools, public transport and health services will become the focus of attention and are critical to the success of the implementation process of the cessation of hostility agreement. It is important that momentum is not lost in the implementation of the cessation of hostility agreement because of outstanding political issues. It is therefore important that the political dialogue should start urgently so that the Ethiopian people can define their future together and ensure that they never again go to war against one another. We have come here to celebrate our hard-won achievement. However, in, it, in a necessary world of realism, it is important to acknowledge that the process towards rebuilding the physical infrastructure and social fabric of Ethiopian society has only just begun. To use words used in the aftermath of another terrible civil war, the war in the former Yugoslavia, a war is not a war until a brother kills a brother. So while it is important that we celebrate our success of a brother not killing a brother anymore, we should also take this opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to peace and to work with and support the Ethiopian government and people to repair the damage wrought by this terrible war. To this end, the AU and its member states must continue to accompany the process in whatever positive way they can, as this will also contribute to and further encourage the voluntary return of internally displaced persons and refugees. Thus, 
it is important that as the population returns, the recently appointed interim regional administration and the federal government should put in place the requisite plans and support mechanism for the restoration and opening of schools and other essential facilities affected by the conflict. Excellencies, during a recent meeting of the Joint Committee on the implementation of, of the cessation of hostility agreement, the party's representatives spoke with despair about the cost of the war and the many lives lost. We mourn with you the life lost, but we also share the joy and we celebrate with you the end of the war. But they also spoke of the hope and relief that peace had brought them, stressing that they have learned the full, awful cost of war. It is this message of hope and affirmation that I want to leave with you as I invite you to continue cooperating and supporting the AU as we accompany Ethiopia on this journey of reconciliation, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and durable peace and development. I have great hope for the unity, peace, security, stability, development and, pro and progress of this country as one of the leading nations, if not the leading nation of Africa in the immediate future. You have what it takes to be in that position. Enough with war, let's sustain peace. In this case, we must treat peace like we treat love, not to be taken for granted. Peace must always be massaged. I thank you for listening.